Hey, hey everyone, welcome to the show. Today I am joined with my husband, Jake, and we are so pumped because we're talking to you about sales. And maybe you love sales, maybe you feel like you crush it at sales, or maybe you're like most people and you're like, ah, man, I need some work on closing or following up or prospecting, all these words that maybe make you cringe. And what Jake and I want to do today is help you realize how the game has changed with sales. Yes, there is principles that are still the same, but I believe it's changed so much and you've got to rise to the occasion. You've got to sharpen your skills. You got to sharpen your ax. Otherwise, your numbers are going to really show. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's interesting when you say the game has changed because the reality is is the core principles of true influence in sales has always been the same. But the issue is, is that over the past few years, maybe even a decade, is there were these people and these trainers that would teach you these tactics that were scripts, just scripts, these these things that just made you sound salesy, it made you sound yeah. slimy. It, it was it maybe worked for a hot minute, then it became so fake looking. And so mm. I think we're gonna really hopefully uncover that, but then show what is that foundational principle. Yeah, it's so good. And I, I want to pause right there because it's such a valid point. I think back in the day that this stuff used to work, but because of social, because of emotional intelligence online, people's BS meters are mm -hmm. sky high. And it used to be like there wasn't video, there wasn't personal brands as much. Mm -hmm. It was like calling people, you know, before, I don't even know, like when we were super young, right? And so I find even when I'm mentoring people that are older than us, I really have to get them to understand, you know, how it works in today's day and age. Right. And, you know, if you are in that quote unquote older spectrum, which let's be real, we're all young in our own ways. I mean, this has always been around, like even when uh, email first started, right in the early 2000s, like you could send anything out on an email because it was so new people would open it almost 100% of the time. Yeah. And you can say the most audacious, crazy claim and people would buy it because it was new. But then after years and years of people getting emails and seeing the typical sales tactics and the sliminess, like that was for email where then you had to separate yourself. And now it's the same for like, you know, messaging in the DMs. It's for the way you're connecting in person at networking events. I, I believe that no matter where you are in your walk of life, this always happens in every single generation, but I think we're going to uncover, let's do that on what is happening in 2024 because yeah. people need to know how to sell with influence. They need to know how to sell with confidence. And I feel like if we would have known this sooner, like in our early days, I think we could be in even crazier, mightier places, but too many people are in a position right now where they don't know any of this and they feel like sales isn't for them. You know right. what I mean? Right, or, or they think, here's what they think. They think that they have a poor money mindset or they're trying to work on their financial thermostat. And yes, that is, there's truth in that. But when I started my journey in sales and I was sleeping on a mattress on the floor, I thought like, oh, I have some broke mindset. And again, there was a little bit of that that was true. But what was even more true, Jake, was was because I didn't have the skills. I didn't know how to get someone to take a look at my products or business opportunity. I didn't know the correct verbiage for that without coming off like three feet of heat and just being like, you have to look at this, you know, when I was so excited about it. Or I didn't know how to follow up with someone without being annoying. Or I remember, when it would come to the point in the sale when you'd have to ask for a credit card, I, I would like quiver. I was literally so scared. And until I learned the skills, like I really did suffer. And when I, once I learned the skills, I was like, it's not a money mindset issue. It was a skill issue. Mm -hmm. So should we dive into some skills? Let's dive into some skills. Okay. So I, I think the funnest way to do this is, and we're, we're rifting right now, by the way, which is going to be so fun because 
I'm gonna put you on the put you on the spot. For oh, some I have situation. no idea what's happening. Because okay. you you get so many people pitching you. Oh you get Lord. good pitches. You get bad pitches. You get um, enticing pitches, and you get uh, puke worthy pitches. Yeah. So, so I love how we can dive into that. Let's start off with for for the listener. Mm. What are some things you shouldn't do like it's 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 one thing to figure out what you should do but i think if we can make a list of don't do this yeah i think that could really help people understand more what to do so so yes in sales in 2024 what are just some things you've seen that people shouldn't do yeah okay this is so good well the number one thing for all business is gaining prospects customers people to buy your thing that's the lifeblood of a business lead and gen. your lead gen and so what you shouldn't do is what happens to me every single day. Someone will DM me and like this just happened two days ago. A girl, she, she was smart enough to follow me first, that's a clue, and then DM'd me and said, where do you live? And I was like, hi, who I'm are like, you? I'm like, who are, who's asking you yeah. this? And, and, and I was like, Southern California, OC area. I wasn't gonna give any specifics. And she said, are you looking to buy or sell right now? And I mean, I unread the message and then didn't write back. And I literally sat there and I was like, how is this person not know to build rapport with me, to make a relationship mm -hmm. and to how to eloquently even bring this up? And I just was like, so I was like, this is cringe. So that's, uh, that's an example. Um, well, let's sit on that one okay. real quick. Because <laughs> how does it, so first off, if you're in real estate, this is obviously specific to you, but even if you're not, if you are uh, reaching out to people in this blunt way, please stop. Like yeah. it just, it looks terrible. Uh, I don't care how good your product is, your, your approach is, it makes us cringe, let alone probably people that um, are closer to you and actually know you, yeah. you're, you're, you're scaring them off. So here, here's another little tip on what not to do with under that same context is Emily said at least build rapport but don't build rapport just to then say those things like if you're like trying to you know small talk and and be cute and and, and build that trust but then you just want to lead into that that sale. question or that yeah. sale don't do that yes it's good to build rapport and yes eventually you can try to close a deal but I like to create some separation in between so within the same text thread of that same day or that same situation, don't go from building rapport for the first time. Let's say Emily responded, you know, she said, Hey, Emily, oh my gosh, I'm a big fan, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, you should always compliment first off, but uh, genuinely, but let's say Emily was like, yeah, yeah, no, amazing. And they're going, and then she goes right into trying to sell Emily. That would also feel just as bad. So I like to create separation. So build the rapport, send a message, give us some love, give some genuine compliments and leave them with some little hanger of like, I look forward to continuing following your journey or I, I'm, I'm excited for that podcast next week and leave space. And then find another way to connect and then maybe you can start to say, hey, by the way, like I saw you're an OC. Yeah. Um, please let me, let me know if you're ever looking to sell. Like that will come off so much better yes. than just trying to, because because uh, last thing, I know you're getting all fired up and I get fired up on this too. Like it looks just as bad if you doing all the right things to build rapport, but then the whole idea of that is easily seen as, oh, they're just trying to connect with me because they obviously just try to sell me something. That does not look good. And it, it does definitely not look good too when you're doing that in text messages to a friend or someone close. This is how you burn bridges. When you have some opportunity or mm -hmm. offer and you haven't texted someone for a while and you send them a text to try to build that trust and you say, hey, by the way, um, you know, I got this person you need to meet that could do this or this you're going to burn a bridge that way because it was obvious that the only reason you were thinking of them was to try to sell them that thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love this. And a really common question I get is like, I'm trying to sell more. I need more clients. I don't have time to build these friendships, these, and, and I really, I really want to help you with this as somebody who went from zero to a million in three years. I, I get that. I 100% get that. So there's an art and there's a way of doing this where you you build that rapport, but then like Jake said, with confidence, you throw in there, you know, it's so awesome to be connected with you. I look forward to following your journey. 
listening to your podcast, plugging along. I'm a realtor in your area, uh, you, you know, and then going from there. So it's like, again, it's, it's not so desperate. It's like, cause then I'm actually like, wow, thank you. Okay. She's a realtor in the area. Okay, great. You know, it's, it's, again, it's just, it's not so desperate and there's an art to it. And, you know, I could give so many examples of this, of even people pitching themselves to come on the podcast. Oh yeah. It's like, I, I need to be on your show. I would be great. Like, I mean, what do you think about that? Well, one? yes, <laughs> it, it's very similar, but let's go into another don't, cause we could definitely go into intricacies, which is why I think we do masterclasses around this. Uh, but what is another big don't in selling in 2024? Um, I would say just automatically spamming people in your link without warming them up. And this may seem very elementary, but it happens every single day. Well, like the law of the buy-in, right? So what happens is they, they work hard and, and they, they come up with something very awesome. Like, hi, Emily, I've found your page. I see you're really into fitness. But then instead of like waiting for a dialogue with me, they send me their link to their nutrition system or their, their, their pre-workout or whatever. And there was no, there was no, um, ping pong. It was like, here's a message this long buy my stuff. And you know, and I get, I get the hustle, but I, what I'd recommend is to get a response from me, have a dialogue with me and then ask me, you know, Hey, are, are, I see, I see you eat super clean. Do you have food allergies? Yes. I'm dairy. I don't do dairy. Don't do gluten. Oh my gosh. We came up with a product recently. I'd love to share it with you if you're open to that. Yeah. And then I go, yeah, send it, send me the link. Okay. So this is the law of the buying and asking first, mm -hmm. same. Like if you're pitching someone to come to an event, you're selling, I don't just say, Hey, you, Hey, I see uh, you're in, you're in Southern California. We're having an event. You should come. Here's the link, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you want to get that dialogue and say, Hey, we're having an event. There's limited seats. There's like-minded people that I know you jam with. If you would like more info, let me know and I'll send you details. Otherwise keep crushing it in your entrepreneurship journey. That is such a disarming energetically feels so different approach, right? Does that yeah. make sense? It, it, it banks off the first one of, of just the, the spamming, but then it's also, you know, you gotta, you gotta look at this one of the law of the buying. It's like, it's like dating, right? So oh. if you're in the dating life, you understand this. If you're married, great. You still have some memories of this. Like you don't just meet someone and within a second or two sentences, ask them on a date or even worse. Some of you are asking to I get married. Even well, there were, there was, it was fast, but I still had to, you know, I got on a FaceTime with you first. Oh, you warmed I, me I up. I warmed you up. Yeah. I, 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 I laid out the value and I said, if you can make it to this, um, to this gala, you know, love to have you there. But I didn't just say, Hey, you're, you're a busy professional. You're cute looking. You should be my date. Yeah. Like, like, you know <laughs> what? No, no, no. You are so right. You courted me so well. <laughs> no, this is a real thing. This is a real thing. I know we're in, this is not a dating episode, but it is like sales. You really, really did. You, you made me feel comfortable that I would actually put on a dress and go to an yeah, event. You had no clue who I was. Yeah, but it was because you built that rapport very nicely. Oh. And how being somebody that was hurt and not open to men, let's just say it, like it's almost like you, you didn't come off with three feet of heat. Mm which would, that's what all the other guys did. And that's the same in sales. Like some yeah. people are burned from, if you're in a network marketing, oh, I don't ever do network marketing. Like they're, cause they've seen the cringe. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a realtor, ah, oh, they're all just out for my commissions. Like, so in this process, you have to build that trust. And in, in the law of the buy-in is, is getting that permission. So if I blank, would you blank? If I sent you this link, would you watch it? You know, if I was able to, you know, get you more information about your, your situation, would you be open to mm -hmm. reading what I send you? Uh, that, that is so powerful because you don't want to just throw the, the link out. You don't want to throw the next steps. I see this for coaches and consultants a lot where I'm actually, I'm, I'm working with uh, an online fitness coach right now, helping him scale and, and, you know, basically make more money because he's right. 
uh, underselling himself and he is doesn't have any systems to his sales process. And one of the things he would do right away is when someone DMs him and asks for information, he would right away, and he's a great dude, he's super genuine. And, he and probably, talented. And you probably listening are, are, are the same, right? So it's, yeah. it's not like you're a bad person. It's just he would word vomit all this information about, well, this is what I do. This is this is what it is. This is all like it was like paragraphs for someone just asking. I'm curious about this, right? And then he would send his website, and then he would also, uh, you know, send his packages of his offers. I'm like, dude, don't do that. Uh-huh. Like it's, I, I get that you're trying to be transparent, but there's a process to it. Mm-hmm. And so he was losing people in the DMs, losing people in the messages because he was giving too much without that permission. He could have said the exact same things that he sent all in one message, and if he would have broken it up into smaller pieces. So, like, give us an example of what that would look like. So, like, they reach out, hey, uh, I'm curious about uh, coaching. Kid, what yeah. it, what does this look like? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, they give the details. Awesome, super appreciate you. You know, reaching out it means a lot. I could, I could see once again. I would go to their page. I can see that you know you're you're an actress and and you're all over. So I'm sure you're very busy. It's so awesome. Uh, I'm curious, what kind of goals are you looking to achieve? So now you're putting it back in their plate because they might say, I want your information, but you, you can't give them information without even knowing who they are. It's not real business. So you say, mm. well, what's your goals? And then they'll say, well, I'm looking to you know lose 12 pounds and, and I'm getting ready for this fitness shoot coming up. Oh, amazing. Okay, and so, uh, and where do you live? Oh, you know, so it's just small little conversations. And then what I was teaching him in this process is, in my opinion, it's best to get on a quick five to 10 minute call. Not try to sell them in the DMs. It might not be for every single business or service, but you wanna get on a quick call yes, to connect. Yeah. So instead of him just giving all the information, cause you know, eventually they're gonna ask, well, you know, what's, it, what's your prices, what's your details? If you have a couple different options for your, your package offers, and you're trying to give that, all that information in the DMs, they're gonna get paralysis by analysis. They're gonna look at it and be like, not respond. And that's literally what happened. He, he word vomited it all out there showed it all and then got ghosted. Not because the person was probably bad, but they probably got overwhelmed. So instead I would make enough small talk to, to, to learn more about them. What's your goals? What are you looking for? Awesome. Well, this is what I'd love to do. Um, if you'd be open to it, see how I said, if you would be open to it, mm-hmm. I'd love for you to, to just fill out this quick form. The first form should only take a minute or less, nothing complex. So you could get some information. And then we can hop on a quick five, 10 minute call yeah. just to see if I can help you and how best I can help so you. So good. So process, then he gets on, I'm just gonna future paces so people that maybe can relate yeah, with this yeah. and can hear it. Yeah. But this is all about the law of the buy-in. They get on a quick call. I like to do it only 10 minutes because if they're not a good fit, great. You don't have to commit more than 10 minutes. You yeah. say, I gotta get on another call. If they're a great fit and you're connecting, I usually like to have a little bit of a buffer time so that you can connect further with them and you're not rushed. Right, so you get on this call, you're just really finding out more info. And then you say, awesome. If they're a good fit, you say, what I would like to do is, because I wanna really serve at your highest and I can give you a better understanding of your, the pricing or the options for you, because everything's custom, is I would love to send you a, another questionnaire. It's gonna take about maybe seven to 10 minutes. See, I didn't send this questionnaire in the very beginning for seven to 10 minutes. They don't even know who I am, why would they, they fill that out? Right. But because they're already bought in, because they see that I'm actually taking them through a process, now they're gonna fill out a more detailed questionnaire. They're really sharing their pain points. They're sharing about their you know, situation that they have in life and how much time they could work out each week. Um, have they worked with coaches in the before? Before, What was their experience? You're getting leverage, but also understanding of how you could serve them. Yeah. And then lastly, then this is where I'd get on a longer call to then ask more details and then present them what you do. That right there, your close rates go through the roof and you actually weed out the people that don't wanna be there. Why I just shared that entire process, some of you that might have gone over your head, but for the few that actually heard that and it resonated, that difference will be the difference of you having 10% close rates because everyone's dropping off here or there, or 40, 50, maybe even 60% close Mm. rates because now they're so much more bought in. So by the time you share the price at the very end, they're like, I'm ready for this, give this to me. And yes, that's how people get when you go through a process like that. So that, that's called the law of the buy-in. So good, and you're, uh, you're collecting data, right? Mm-hmm. You're like collecting all that. And this is the same thing that, you know, if you work with Jake with consulting or if you mentor with me, I send a form first. Like I don't 
spend an hour in the DMs being like, what are you doing? Are you a designer? Are you in, are you in network marketing? I don't even go down that road. It's like, oh, you want mentoring? Let's send you a form and see if you'd be a good fit. And then from there we do, we jump on a call. And, and this is even similar for speaking opportunities or all different kinds of things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't just meet someone at an event that maybe is looking for speakers and just like dump all my stuff on them. No, we see if they're open to getting the speaker real. We see if they're open to getting on a Zoom. Like there's a process to it. And you know, how the game has changed in 2024, since that's what this is all about, is that you have to have, and I believe your personal brand is your greatest asset. And people are smart. They're like private investigators. They look at your account. Do you, do you walk your talk? You know, how many other people have you helped? Are, and that is why it's so wildly important to be producing great content, to be growing your personal brand, because it's gonna make it that much easier when you go to sell, whether it's your product, your service, your event, what have you. Don't you agree? I absolutely agree. That's why we're doing this masterclass or this 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 conversation because it's uh, it's so needed and so evident. Let's do one more um, skill because I think this is just so powerful for people to hear the tactics and skills. What is one skill that is the most understated? Like it's a skill that more people should be doing. They probably are. Oh my gosh! Yes, this is. And and before you share that, I do want you to share about what we got coming here next Tuesday. Okay. So next Tuesday, the 13th. So it's the day before Valentine's day. Don't forget it. We are running a three hour masterclass on sales. We're actually going to give you a workbook on the whole process from common objections people have to best practices. We are doing a full blown deep dive. If you sell anything, including yourself, it is my personal opinion that you must develop your skills and sharpen your ax. It's costing you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. If you have a sales force, think of them, like you need people trained. And so where do they go if they wanna join us on that? FortitudeMentorship.com backslash masterclass. Yes. So the link, the link will be below, but it's FortitudeMentorship.com backslash masterclass. And Emily and I are gonna be training you together. So mm -hmm. she'll be bringing in her insight from her, you know, building a, a sales organization over 150,000 customers. Yes, 150,000. Uh, been, you know, the youngest and most, most successful for when you started from age 23 to 26, 14 different countries that you opened up, teams. Like, she's walked the walk. I don't, I don't know if you know this, but she, she's walked the walk. And I've seen that firsthand. I've seen the, the leaders of what she's created to then go and multiply. Um, and let me just say like those skills, learning how to sell someone on a fat burning and cleansing system back in the day, that skill set has transcended into all the other areas that I do today, closing somebody on a $25,000 keynote, closing someone on a, a, a coaching package. It's the skill set mm -hmm. that is invaluable. So we're both training that. So she's gonna bring that. I'm gonna bring a lot on the influence side. So I, I like to be systems tactics. I'm sure the past couple minutes you realize how I like to get into the nitty gritty. So if any of this has been resonating with you, you better believe we're going on a deeper dive on selling with confidence. And the thing I'll leave you with, and we'll continue into this is, what is it gonna cost you if you don't show up here? Because this is such an affordable masterclass that literally this one masterclass can create a 10, 100, 1000 X ROI within weeks of applying this. No smoke because of how much it could change a process that you're already doing in your product service or selling yourself. So go to 42mentorship.com backslash masterclass. We'd love to see you there. And if for some reason you cannot join live, don't worry, you can access the full recording and be able to watch it for a lifetime onward. Uh, so you can get all the good nuggets. But let's go back to the one skill that is underrated and most oh. people are not using. Oh this my shit. gosh, it's it's f you. It's the follow up. And so many people that I've worked with are like, 
oh gosh, I don't want to be annoying. And I'm like, let's reframe that because if you're, if you really have a solution that's going to bless someone's life, why do you feel bad for reminding you, them that you have it? And what I have done is I've learned creative ways to follow up with people that is not annoying and you're just staying in contact. And again, that's a huge reason why you need to be posting content and omnipresent because even if you're not intentionally following up, you're subconsciously following up because you're visible, right? So that's a whole nother masterclass, which we have many recordings on that. But the follow up is absolutely key. I mean, him and I both have individual stories of being persistent and, and, you know, even with friendships we have that have now turned into business partnerships, but having that curiosity of, of wanting to get to know them more of, you know, whether you're going to shoot hoops with someone or you're going to work out and you have a genuine interest in the person. And then, you know, from there, you, you find creative ways if that opportunity opens up to work with them. But when it comes to the follow up, you know, I, I really truly believe most times if the quality of the conversation was good initially, it's not that people don't want to buy. It's just either it's not the right timing. They don't have enough information. They haven't collected the data. There's maybe objections that are in their head right? Those are two huge things. And so something that Jake and I teach is how to present so you won't have as many objections. There's an art to that. Mm -hmm. But I truly believe staying on the forefront of people's mind and, you know, reaching out to them, not just for the close of the sale, but reaching out to say hi, uh, to support whatever it is that they're doing. And Jake, that's something you know, when I was in my network marketing days, I just supported other network marketers. Mm -hmm. Like they were happy in their companies, but I honestly supported them, cheered them on. And just by supporting other people and their endeavors, it's like what goes around comes around. When I launched a new perfume, they bought it. When I did this, mm -hmm. an event, they came, right? And so, there's just so much to be said about that. I think so many times we want so much, but we're not willing to give so much, right? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. We say it's uh, not so much that the fortune is in the follow up, but the blessing is in the follow up. Yeah. Right? You followed up with me. I followed. <laughs> okay, it yeah, always so. comes back I, to our relationship. relationship. <laughs> I love it. Um, but I, you know, I do this for now in my season you know because i first started off as a personal trainer had no clue about entrepreneurship was figuring things out so i don't even remember what i was doing for follow-ups it was probably natural but mediocre at best then when i became an online trainer and started to be able to work with people all over the country um, i started to learn about the power of the follow-up because there was people on instagram social media text like following up not just for prospects but also you know previous clients staying connected you yeah. know you never know what could come from that um, and then, you, you're and then, so, I have to interject. You are so good. I'm not saying this cause, cause he's my love. You are so good at following up with people like via text, voice message. I, I don't know if I've met somebody that's so good at it, well, but it and you're not like, annoying. You're not like, it's not you. It's, is there any, what are you thinking when you're doing this? Well, great question. Um, I wasn't always good at that. I cause <laughs> you used to be a nat naturally I, I'm, you know, a selfish being, being a, a young, youngest of three and, you know, like having to find my own self worth and all that. So like naturally I was just kind of like that where if it wasn't relevant to me, then why do I mess? Well, you're motivated, but I had to change that. Yeah. And, but also I had to have a, a change of heart, which is when I follow up or, or send a message, like if I don't, if I don't do it now, then when will I do it? That's like literally like my mindset, like, okay, we just finished this call. If I don't send them like, Hey, that was great connecting with you. I look forward to hearing X, Y, Z. If I don't send that now, when am I going to send that? So I try to do it as soon as the moment happens of sending a follow up, or if I'm thinking of people and someone comes to my mind, you know, a lot of people like overuse the saying, like, hey, you crossed my mind, you know, just as a 
as, as a manipulative way. But when I have people that actually cross my mind, I'm like, there, there's some there's some reason why they cross my mind in that random moment. So let me send them a genuine message and just let them know, hey, you, you, you I, I just thought of you or hey, you just crossed my mind because and I tell them what because you know, I was at this event and, and, and so-and-so was talking about this company and it made mm. me think of you. Like that way it shows a very genuine approach of right. why you were thinking of them. And there's no ulterior motive behind that, right? Remember when I was sharing earlier, it's like, I'm not doing that then saying, hey, by the way, we're doing this event, you should come buy a ticket. No, that's, that's terrible. That's how you lose that trust. So I just try to put as many irons in the furnace to really not just build my my follow-ups, but also to build my my network of relationships. And you know, I just have I have this mindset that more over 90% of the people, even maybe more, will never be a customer. And that's okay because I'm not following up just to create customers. I'm following up to build relationships. And I believe this is a practice that when you lead with building relationships, the business indirectly will grow. But when you do it to try to build the business, not only will the business be hindered, but your actual relationships will be hindered mm -hmm. because no one wants to have someone that is just following up or staying connected to eventually close a deal on them. I know I don't like that. I know you don't like that. And so what makes you think you have the right to do that to other people? So that, that just, that's my mindset, but also skills on how I you know, do the follow-up or the, you know, the blessings of the follow-up. Yeah. Yeah. You're really good at keeping the, the, the Kindle going up. You look at it as like a fire, like just putting the logs on the fire and when, and if it ever comes around to doing a deal together, or doing something together, it's just about building that rapport. And so again, we'll train on all this in the master class on like fast sales. Cause there's times where I'll post on social media and someone just, they want the skincare, they want, the outfit like that that's a bit different but again why they're ready to just buy it right away is because i've built that trust with my social platform with you know does she really use this skincare yeah she does because she posts about it all the time there's no way there she doesn't use it or she shows us how she uses it and so there's different variances to this whole thing when it comes to sales uh, there really is, but I just believe so much that in 2024, we can see and smell the phonies. It is so clear who is phony and you can also feel it when they just come after you for that sale. And so these skills are absolutely invaluable to learn no matter what you are selling. And we hope that this was helpful for you specifically. I mean, we don't want to make a multi-hour uh, podcast because there's more and more we could teach, but hopefully these few skills, you know, with how you shouldn't reach out to people, you know, how you should actually build rapport genuinely, um, looking at it where it's, it's like you're, you're, you're dating someone or you're in a relationship, like you don't just go for the marriage right away. Like it just doesn't make sense. You have to have that process and get the law of the buy-in and then also the, the follow-ups on all the skills that we're providing. Mm -hmm. Like. Those, th those three skills alone will help you have more confidence in your sales, uh, right? In the way that you sell. And, you know, if you are someone that is looking for more detail, you might be asking like, okay, but how does this apply here? Or, okay, well, I want more about the follow-up or I want to know more about, you know, how you do that, that process of the buy-in. I have this situation. I need some, like, if those are going through your head, then, then we just really just urge you to come join us at our masterclass because that's the reason why we're doing the masterclass to continue this value because we understand that if you're getting value from here you're only going to get more value from a three hour masterclass four hours if you join us for the q a live at the end so you get specific questions four hours of deep work on selling with confidence from both emily and i coming together making an incredible experience you can see all the testimonials of previous master classes on the site 42 mentorship.com backslash masterclass so many people have been loving it, hundreds and hundreds of people, and we would love for you to be one of them. And it will be so worth it because we made it very, very affordable. So until then, I think uh, maybe we'll come back with another round of sales or other things that we bring in here. Absolutely. Yeah, hashtag no phonies. Let's do this, and we hope to see you in the masterclass. Thanks so much for listening.
God bless. See you soon.